So let's talk about real estate investment strategies. As I said, this is a continuation of last week's episode where we spoke about REITs. And so this week we're going to talk about just some options now outside of the stock market that you can look at if you want to invest in real estate. So four strategies that I thought would be um, would be good to consider for the individual investor. So you have the buy and hold strategy. We're going to talk about that. Investment properties, which is what most people may think about when they're investing in real estate. So I'll talk about that, what it means, what are some of the considerations you should have. We're going to talk about the fix and flip investing. This would be a little bit like you may see on HGTVs and those channels in the US. Um, so most persons would know a little bit about that when I talk about it. And then land flipping or development. Most persons might not have thought about some of the things we look at here. So let's start with buy and hold. So buy and hold investing is when you purchase real estate with the intention to hold it for the long term, right? So the main benefit here is capital appreciation and the ability to use that equity that you'll build up over time as capital maybe for other investments. So buy and hold could mean, for example, your primary place of residence. So for example, this home that I'm in right now is an investment property, except I'm living in it. Now, some persons may not see the home that you live in as an investment property, but it is an asset that's appreciating in value. And so it certainly has to be included and of course, there are some persons who would have their home as in their primary residence and another property that and another um, section of that same property being used as maybe like a one room or a two room to rent out that section. Of course, you can include that as well. But the primary thing here is that you're, you're focusing on capital appreciation. And of course, you, you'll be able to benefit from the equity that you'll build up in the property as you hold it for the long term. Next, we have investment properties. Again, I, I believe this is the one that most people may go to when they think about investing in real estate. This is where you buy a house, apartment, maybe a multi-home property. So maybe a six bedroom that you can split into maybe three, two bedrooms, or maybe you have multi-homes on the same property anything of that nature. And it's the it's with the intent of getting rental income from either short-term rentals, Airbnbs. It could be that you're planning to do long-term leases. And I say long-term, like 12 months, 24 months, et cetera. And the aim here is cash flow generation, right? And this is usually to supplement your primary income. Now, what you have to bear in mind with these kind of situations, of course, if it is a single house, Think about all the things that may come with buying a home. Now, we actually had a video where we covered buying a home and the total cost of home ownership. We have that video here on this channel, so be sure to check that out. You'll have to consider things like your, your deposits, closing costs, surveyor costs, valuation, etc. And the state of the home is going to be important, right? Is it a brand new home? Is it something that you're going to have to do some 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 repairs on. I know what my wife would normally ask me, is the home living ready, right? Because you may not want to have to spend any money before you start getting that additional cash flow. If it's an apartment, newer apartments tend to be better. But of course, the mortgage may be high, especially with interest rates being at a high right now. And then of course, uh, persons would usually use apartments for things like Airbnb and other um, opportunities in terms of rentals, right? So that's the investment property. Next, we have fix and flip. Now, this is kind of exactly as it sounds, where I find that this may be best suited for persons who are either in the real estate industry or have, you know, relationships with, with contractors and people who can do work on time and within budget because the thought of doing this as an individual who has had bad experiences with persons to do repairs on time and within budget. I may get frustrated with this, but of course, for somebody who has maybe the network, um, the, the understanding of you know, the types of you know, repairs that may be needed, this may be a great opportunity for you. So you're going in, buying either a distressed property or something that is in a state where you see that if you renovate it or maybe make some modifications, you'll be able to, in, in a short while, 
sell it at a higher price. So the steps, you, you acquire it, you renovate it, and then you sell. And then buying land, something that I've actually met someone, um, well, I've known him for a few years, and what he does is he... He, he calls it land banking. <laughs> so as he gets some extra money, he's purchasing land. And, you know, one of the things I said to him is that you have this land, maybe you should look to do other things with it. So when you own land, you have a few things that you can do with it. Of course, you can buy it, hold it, wait for it to appreciate, or you can, you know, group up with some friends and purchase an even larger plot of land and then subdivide those into smaller units maybe you make apartments with those maybe you do other things with it um but you have you have a lot of flexibility depending on the size of the land and then of course i also see and think about opportunities where you may want to use that land for maybe rental of events or other things that may be applicable of course within the permissions of where that land is located or anything of the sort right so those are the the four you know, real estate investing options. So what I wanted to do here is bring on Rory because Rory has a fifth option that I thought it would be interesting after I had a conversation with him. So please join me in welcoming Rory De Silva. Rory, how are you doing? Hey, Jeremy, I'm doing good, doing good. Thanks for having me. All right, so please take a minute and just introduce yourself and Jamvest and what you do, then we'll get into our discussion. Yeah, so, so Jamvis, we are a real estate investment company based here in Kingston. I've worked in the real estate space for a few years in Canada and the US and recently returned to open an office here. Um, so yeah, real estate is a passion of mine. It's pretty much an obsession <laughs> at this point. So I'm excited to share um, different tips and tricks as to how people can get started in real estate investing. All right, cool. So what did you think of my my four um my four strategies there because as i was going through it i'm like well knowing rory rory's gonna be like well join me and he said that <laughs> wrong he shouldn't have said that and you know so so first your comments on my four tips and then you can share the one that you think would be a good opportunity for persons or the fifth one rather that you know could be added yeah. to that list no, good, good job. Good job recapping the four. Both, they're all four good strategies, right? Um, and the way I think <clears throat> viewers should think about real estate investing is just like the stock market where there are different strategies depending on what your objectives are. So you have your buy and hold um, investment strategies where it's long term um, or you have your day trading where it's a bit more aggressive. Similar situation for real estate. So one of the more aggressive options um, would be real estate wholesaling, right? So this is a strategy that our core business is real estate wholesaling. And we do this in the US while being here in Jamaica. Um, but since returning home, I've been talking to local professionals in the real estate space to recreate what we're doing to start doing it here in Jamaica. So from a high level, real estate wholesaling is just the ability to find distressed properties. So what that means is you're contacting homeowners or property owners that have some sort of need to sell this property. And in exchange for you satisfying that need, they will be willing to sell at a discount. So for a quick example, Jeremy, you might have inherited an acre of land and you say, you know, you don't want to pay the taxes or have to deal with the land. So you reach out to me and you say, hey, Rory, I just want a cash offer for this land. The land might be worth a million dollars. And he said, just for a cash, easy transaction, I'll be willing to sell it to you for 800,000, right? Now I can turn around and sell this to an investor who might look at that same plot of land and for whatever reason, maybe they're a developer, they might be willing to pay, you know, 1.1 or even a million dollars, right? So now I'm basically simultaneously agreeing with you to pay you 800,000 for the land turning our own and selling that back to a developer at the million dollar um, price point and just pocketing that $200,000 spread. So that's in a high level summary, what real estate wholesaling is about. So the very first question that comes to mind when you say that one, I'd need the relationship with the developer yeah. and two, I'd need to scope out opportunities to act because if it's not my land, then I'd probably need to look and find land 
convince that owner. So it, it kind of feels like maybe is it something the average person can do or that's where they need to partner with you to make it a reality? Yeah, to be honest, there are resources online that people could research and do it on their own. I'm a big believer in partner partnerships and just having teammates like real estate is a team sport. Um, so it, it's definitely something good to have people around you who are doing um, similar strategies so you can learn from each other. So the first point where you mentioned having to know the developer, the cheat code to that, I would say, is speaking to agents, right? So you have agents who actually focus on investors, right? They have a Rolodex of developers or cash buyers, people who just want to park money. Um, so the more conversations you have with agents is the higher your chance of finding that right one. So the two key people in this transaction or the strategy, a good real estate agent that works with investors, as well as a real estate attorney who knows the proper paperwork that you need to have in place to protect your interests. Because again, Jeremy, you and I agree at that $800,000 price point, we need to make sure we have a contract in place that protects my interests and a, so that the developer who is coming to buy it, they can't circumvent me or go directly to you to offer you that price. So then, so it, I mean, that sounds to me like, so if I wanted to get involved in something like that, I would engage someone like you. How do persons reach out to do business with you? How would that work? Yeah, sure. So I'm active on Instagram. So the handle is at Jamvesto, J-A-M-V-E-S-T-O-R, or by email, Rory at Jamvest.com. Um, and yeah, we're making very good connections right now. So again, bring the awareness and the education to implement some of these strategies here locally. So being able to tap into our real estate attorney or agents that we've already shortlisted who work with investors uh, would be valuable. Um, so the only thing someone looking to get started would be responsible for is really marketing and finding those types of leads. And there are ways that you can go about doing that as well in a very cost-effective um, manner. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So the final thing I'll ask you, uh, I'm running debate in our group and I had to you know, put you on the spot here. So for everyone's benefit here, Rory and I are yeah. in a group and the discussion was raised, you know, stocks versus real estate. So Rory, I'll allow you to share your piece um, and I'll share mine. So, so, so my take was that, you know, stocks are lower barrier of entry easier to get started and, and the returns, the return potential is greater than that of real estate. So Rory, I'll allow you to share your case, you know, before we end our, our interview here. Yeah. So it's definitely been quite a healthy debate. Um, my background actually started out in finance, working as a trader. So very familiar with stocks and the stock market. Oh, have they a, probably a have stock, stock market trauma then. Yeah, no, no, no. Things are fine on the stock side, but I just looked at the opportunity cost and I realized I was making a lot more on the real estate side. So I shifted gears there, right? So one of the key things I think that helps is just to understand there's so many different strategies that you can implement with real estate investing. Um, so it's just bringing the awareness, right? So in that example, wholesaling, you could put up a sign, right? Just saying, we buy houses cash. Someone could call you. And all of a sudden, that's a deal that you can then sell to a developer for a two, three hundred thousand dollar profit, right? So yeah. your cost or investment would really just be the cost to put that sign up and get your permissions from parish council. So I like the reason why I gravitate so much towards real estate is because I see the opportunities for people, everyday people, to just get involved and really um, expedite their wealth or their income earning potential. And then they can also reposition that wealth into stocks, you know, and then get that appreciation as well. So not saying stocks are bad, but there's there's a way to balance it too, for sure. Okay, the debate continues. So the debate thanks continues. Again, <laughs> thanks again, Rory. Really do appreciate it. And if you have any no questions, feel free to reach out to Rory. You can find him on Instagram and TikTok. And I'll leave his information in the description. And I believe you said, Rory, you may be able to hang out in, in the chat for a little bit just in case persons have yeah. questions, right? All right, awesome. Yeah, I'll hop into now. All right, thank you. All right, so hopefully you got um, some new 
perspectives in terms of real estate investing that that real estate holds wholesaling rory has explained it to me three times i think i now understand it and so let me know if you're interested in that let me know in the comments if that's something you think you may be interested in as i mentioned for me i see where those those two things that i mentioned would be the areas that i would have concerns with but of course if you have the right network if you have the right strategy and of course once you get informed then it's something that may be a great opportunity for you